Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Hashtag Ask Firebase, the show where we answer your burning Firebase questions. I'm Jen Person, now let's get started. Sabrat? Sabrat? I would say Sabrat. Sabrat? All right, cool. Sabrat on Twitter wants to know, how can I learn Firebase? Please give me a link to some tutorials. Well, the good news is I know of a great tutorial made by an awesome person. It's called Firebase in a Weekend, and you can check it out on Udacity's website. And we have the link below. Thanks for your question. Okay, hit me with your next question. Magnus on Twitter wants to know, is there a way to listen to a specific ref and storage with cloud functions for Firebase? Thanks, Magnus, that's a great question. And the answer is no. There isn't a way to attach a listener just to a file or a folder within your storage bucket. But what you can do is set up another storage bucket, attach that to your project, and then listen to changes in that bucket alone. Thanks for your question. This just in, the next question. Now, Taro on Twitter asks, sometimes I get an econ reset error when converting an image using Cloud Functions. I return the promises just like in the examples. What should I do? Now, that's a good question, Taro. This actually comes up for a lot of developers because it can be difficult to manage a whole bunch of promises at once. We have a couple resources that you can check out. We have a YouTube video talking about promises and we also have a blog post and links to those are below and those should help you out. Thanks for your question. Moving on to the next question. Now, Eric on Twitter would like to know, how do I remove a node from the database using Cloud Functions. Thanks for your question. Now, the answer really depends on what kind of trigger you're using. So if you are using a database trigger, the way you can delete information is using event.data.ref or event.data.adminref. If you would like to delete data from a different part of the database, then you're gonna to wanna to use the root property of the ref and then build a path from there. Now, if you're using some kind of other trigger, then you're going to want to use the Firebase admin SDK to access the database. Thanks for your question. Another question. This next question question comes to us from YouTube and it says, instead of using a database trigger to sanitize incoming data, why not use an HTTP trigger to handle and write the sanitized data? Now the answer is there are pros and cons to both methods. Let's take a look at HTTP triggers. If you're already using an HTTP client library that you're familiar with, then it may make sense just to stick with HTTP triggers. Now, a disadvantage of using HTTP triggers in this way is that it's difficult to handle retries. So if that connection gets cut off, you really don't know what information has been committed and you don't know if you need to retry again. An advantage of using database triggers is connection management is taken care of. You only have to write once and you can be confident that it will sync when the connection is good. Thank you for your question. Next question. Silvio on Twitter asks, how can I get the full URL of an HTTP request in a cloud function trigger? An HTTP trigger contains a request object and a response object. The request object contains the properties of the request that was made by the client. The response is where you send the results back to the client. So check out the documentation on the request object to see what properties are available on it, including the URL. And of course, the link is below. Thanks for your question. Well, that's all we have time for for today. Thank you so much for submitting your questions. And if you would like to see maybe your questions answered here, then go ahead and submit them with the hashtag AskFirebase, and I will see you here next time.